Good evening and welcome. I hope you are all well. You might remember that a while ago we looked at the combination of poetry and prayer. And it seems at this time when we are surrounded by so many different challenges that using just our own words for our prayers can be a struggle. We find at times that we've run out of what we want to say in terms of words and so we rely on other people's words like poetry. Well, another part of prayer life can be to meditate on other artworks. And so for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking at things which have been produced by painters. When the use of colour and the use of contrast, of shadow and shade, they're able to conjure up pictures and images which have lasted with us for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so we'll be looking at some of the most famous paintings which have taken an interesting look at the stories from the Gospel. This week, our first painting is called by two separate titles, In My Father's House, and it's a painting by John Everett Mealy. Now, John Everett Mealy lived in the late 1800s. He was part of the pre-Raphaelite movement, and there is a connection to our own benefice. If you go to the church of Llantrisant and look at the stained glass window, or if you go to the vestry at St. David's Miskin, you'll see works of art produced and influenced by the same pre-Raphaelite movement. Well, this painting by John Everett Mealy was controversial in its time when it was first exhibited. But who is John Everett Mealy? Well, John Everett Mealy was born in Jersey, grew up um, on the south coast near Southampton. The interesting thing about him, he was the youngest person ever to get into the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Um, it's very difficult to get in still today. You have to go as a postgraduate student. And John Everett Mealy managed to get a scholarship to the Royal Academy at the age of 11. He was a child prodigy. He was um, wonderful at drawing and painting. Um, I mean, later on in life, eventually, he became the president of the Royal Academy. And if you go to Tate Britain now, you will find a statue to him uh, uh, near one of the entrances of that museum. John Everett Mealy um, was friends with John Ruskin and very friendly with John Ruskin's wife um, because John Ruskin's wife divorced John and married John Everett Mealy and they were happily married for many years. Um, but what is controversial or interesting about John's painting? Well, take a close look at this painting. What do you see? You see a workshop. What are they making? They're making a door. What is one of the other famous paintings from the pre-Raphaelite movement? It's Christ at the door. I stand and knock. What's also um, being alluded to in this painting is, of course, Christ's future. If you see at the front of the painting, you'll see Jesus standing there and he seems to be a bit upset. He's being comforted by his mother Mary. Because the reason is, if you look at the hand of Jesus, he's caught his hand on a nail sticking out of the door and it has cut his hand in the place where years later he would have a nail hammered into his hand on the cross. And a bit of his blood has fallen onto his foot, where also, in years to come, another nail would be placed. In the background, you've got um, Mary's mother, Anna, who has taken the nail, which has caused the accident, out of the door. She's serving the Christ child. You have Joseph there um, as the head of the workshop. What else do you have in the painting? Well, you, if you look on the one side, on the right side of the painting, you have a figure which seems to be someone out of the story of Oliver Twist. He is a young boy standing there with a bowl. He's bringing the water bowl to wash 
um, the hand and foot of Jesus um, and help clean the wound from this accident. Well, this boy who's depicted by John Everett Mealy is the boy who grows up to be John the Baptist, who will later baptise Jesus with water. The figure on the other side of the painting, on the left side of the painting, is there um, in a sense to represent all the disciples of Jesus. So you have within this workshop a, a picture depicting what is to come. This small boy was having a normal accident in a workshop of a carpenter, but nevertheless it's already referring to the different events of Jesus' life. But if you look out through the door, if you look out through the window, you see other references. You see the bird, which is a reference to the Holy Spirit descending. You see the flock of sheep, also reminiscent of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. So you see all these references, but there's nothing controversial about these references. We would um, pick up all these allusions, probably, and we would say, yes, that's part of the Jesus story. But why did it cause such controversy when, when it was exhibited at the Royal Academy? Well, the reason is, it was for the first time that Jesus had been depicted in an ordinary home. What is being depicted here is the workshop, and some said it was a very working class environment for Jesus to be placed in, and it was criticised for that. You have wood shavings, you have dirt on the floor, and many people um, took offence that Jesus as the Son of God would be placed in an environment where he encountered dirt and realism, the everyday matter of life. And this continues to be a question which we all face. I wonder when you think of the person from the Gospel stories, when you think of Jesus, do you think of the Jesus who walked this earth, who was very much human? Or is your faith more engaged with the Jesus who ascended into heaven, the Christ, the divine figure from another place. It's very difficult at times for those who have a faith, who have spent a lot of their life worshipping the second person of the Trinity, to also remember and to balance in their minds that Jesus, the Son of God, lived in a real world, full of disease, full of dirt, full of all the things that we engage in still as human beings. He lived a human life. What does that do to our faith? Is it something which challenges it because we like to think of Jesus as just divine, as from another world, who just sailed through this world, not encountering the difficulties, but rode above them, bringing his message of love and at times a life of miracles? Or is it encouraging to know that this Christ, this Son of God, this Jesus, our Lord, walked in an environment, grappled with an environment, which was the same, or in some senses, much worse than the one we encounter now. When you read historians who concentrate on that period of history, nearly everybody in that time would have been carrying diseases. Diseases picked up from the ground, from their bare feet, diseases of the skin picked up through contact, diseases of the lungs and the heart, through malnutrition, through dirty water. This is a very real environment which Jesus lived in. And it's a very real environment that John Everett Mealy places Jesus in his painting. So hopefully when in the evening maybe you have run out of words to explain 
in your prayers what you feel, or maybe you've run out of words and you just want to meditate in the silence. Maybe you can use that time to just look at this painting, to reflect and ask yourself the question, what do I see in the painting? And what, more importantly, what does this painting say about the challenge that Jesus as the Son of God challenges all of us? How do we balance our understanding of human life, but also someone who is also divine? It is at the heart of our faith, continues to be a challenge, but also an encouragement that this life can be engaged, be embraced with all its difficulties, but also can be so much more. You might remember that before Christmas we looked at the Christmas Carol in a bleak midwinter, which was written by another member of the Pre-Raphaelite movement, Christina Rossetti. And Christina Rossetti wrote various poems. And so to begin our prayers, I'm going to read um, a line from one of her poems. Lord, what have I to offer? Accept the whole, my God, accept my heart and its own love within. Wilt thou accept us and not sift apart, only sift out my sin? Lord, what have I to offer? Heavenly Father, we are aware that this past year, the last 12 months have been so difficult for so many. It seems never ending, even though we have the hope of vaccine and better days, it seems slow in coming. For many, words no longer seem enough. We pray therefore that you would help us find other ways to continue to support our faith and our enthusiasm for life. We ask with the return of the light this spring, so will our spirits soar. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this evening and next week we'll look at another painting and how it can be something of a resource for our own meditations and prayer life. If you've got any questions about this painting or John Everett Mele, um, please um, email through the Facebook page and we'll try and answer them and also go online have a look at the other paintings by Holman Hunt and Rossetti etc. They're all um, sometimes challenging but always worthwhile taking a look. But for now, take care, look after yourselves and see you soon.